Our class is producing a 30-minute PBS program for Maryland Public Television. It will air during Chesapeake Bay Week, which is an annual week that they dedicate to stories about the Chesapeake Bay. And our class um, started from scratch. They had to pitch ideas, and then the class voted on the four top stories that they wanted to produce. Like that one got the most votes. Okay. And then these ones, and then you can do it by well, a score based on based on that if you wanted to. Some of them look like they group very well. So we have this one is kind of on its own. We have all these CBF, all these. Those four. My name is Andrea Bloom, and I am a second year graduate student at American University. I'm here to hopefully make some documentary films and learn more about my own filmmaking style. I pitched an idea about Native Americans Relation, and their um, relationship to the Bay. I thought it'd be really interesting to do a story on the Native American relationship to the Chesapeake Bay because I find that it isn't covered as much on the East Coast as it is on the West, where we learn all about the Native American relationships to the water and to the land and stuff. The tribe that I found was the Mataponi people. I don't know if that's who you found. But I decided to go with the idea of the Anacostia River and the rowers and paddlers, which was Joe Grimmie's idea. I was so compelled by Joe Grimmie's pitch of the Anacostia River that I felt I had to even drop my own treatment and work on his, because I thought that I could almost see the film in my mind when he described it. I'm Larry Engel and I've been making films for 30 years. A good pitch is a pitch that gets the potential client to buy into you and then the story. The key is that you have to know two things. One is who you are and what your capabilities are and limitations are. Two, what is the story? The AU one and one of the high school groups to get to know how the work that people have done to clean up the Anacostia has affected their practice, has affected the meets that they have, have they been able to practice more. I think that could be in a really interesting visually as far as being on the boats, getting some shots from the side, and also talking to the people who use the place, give it a real human element so that people will get into it and know that their work is doing something good and that they need to keep doing it. And the Joe Grimmie. I decided I wanted to have my idea be centered around something that wouldn't normally get the attention that it probably deserves. Of it being such a polluted river in the past, it had been almost browbeaten into the public. And the idea of the crew teams is a way to do that and have it be more fun and show the public that they are doing a good job, people are enjoying the river, and you need to keep doing the work. There's a lot more that can still be done but everybody can enjoy it when it's done. Anybody can go out and make a YouTube special of them sitting in the dorm room acting silly, but that doesn't communicate anything to the world. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make a difference. And I'm all for that. I think it's wonderful fun. But our purpose in this class is to create a new generation of environmental filmmakers who will change the world. All I do is try to give the viewers some sort of uh, idea in their head of either what they can do next or what is important that they should focus on. I see environmental filmmaking as a facet of the general environmental movement. I think that film reaches a lot more people than uh, even print media. So I think that it's important to get your message out there through video and through film because people will pay more attention than if you had a long, really long newspaper or magazine article. And I would hope that every environmental film wouldn't just be, here's the problem, but would also be, here are some of the solutions and here are some of the things we're working toward, because otherwise there's no pur purpose to have the films. They really need to show the problem, but also show action in order to create action. No matter what your level is, when you're doing a production like this, you're going to encounter problems. Mm -hmm. So even the most advanced students ran into big problems. They had, uh, they learned, for example, on the crew that did the story on the Anacostia, that 
there's no way you can light the river at four in the morning and get the shots that you want, even with your best intentions. We decided now we're gonna have a shooting day, and we added the shooting day oh, on the 27th for capital rowing, which is the other subject, and we're gonna do, and that's the only day we can get a sunset shot because the sunset comes up after AU finishes their practice. Sunrise. Sunrise. After they? It rises at like 7.15 and they're done by then. Okay, I have a question about that. Logistically, Friday, if it's dark out, are we going to be able to see anything? That's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. Well, my next question, too. See. And there are lights, exterior lights at the place that they have lit. But is that going to be enough? Our camera does not overexpose, but I kind of like it. When we first decided to shoot, we had an idea at the very beginning, this is even when I pitched it, that it would open with the crew teams being on the river with the sunrise behind them, not realizing that the crew team practices from 5 to 7 in the morning out of the Anacostia which means that we would have to get up and meet them there around a quarter till five, which in Washington, D.C., there is absolutely no light. I think that one other thing that is very beneficial and that other students could learn from is the fact that um, you learn from your mistakes. And these students really ran into Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong anytime you're on a shoot. The other one was interesting. We actually tried to get that shot with the crew team where they would be in the boats, leaving the dock, and then coming back into the dock. We wanted to get the two people who we'd interviewed from the crew team in the boat working together so we can promote the teamwork aspect that they always talked about. We tried this four times, rescheduled because of rain, because people were sick. We finally got out there one morning, it was 7.15. We were gonna do it really quick in 15 minutes, have them load the boat, go out, turn around, come back. And someone had forgotten their keys. I remember that was a nice day. That's all right, man. <laughs> I was thinking about how we're going to throw the boat. It's all right, but... I got to see that really one. Can see if she had seen before, you know? <laughs> It was worth a trip. Yeah. It was a really interesting morning. Um, we just had to take it in stride. We just had to laugh. There's nothing more you could do. I woke up really early in the morning to drive down to Southeast DC with my good friend Joe Grimmy. And Andrea got lost in Southwest. I ended up on the bus going the wrong direction. Lost. In Southwest. <laughs> the <Southwest. laughs> And then I uh, was. Oh, Joe came... here. <laughs> what, are we done already? Yeah. What was going on here? No, um, <laughs> uh, on. they couldn't get a boat. They locked themselves out of the boat. Right? The boats uh, were locked <laughs> in the boat house. You couldn't be mad it was 7.15 in the morning, honestly. <laughs> At that time, you can't be, you can't be upset because uh, there's no point. And I think the students that came through this class, through all their trials and tribulations, are going to be so much stronger and so much more confident because they had both the professional opportunity and the comfort of a classroom setting to make those first mistakes the first time out. They didn't have to do it on their first job, they did it here. We did get a shot that did work for the beginning of the film. I have been in the business for almost 30 years now, one way or the other. I learned things from this class. They ran into situations that I had not encountered, and so we all learned together about what to do the next time. Our group was really fun because all four of us are really type A personality, where we know what we want to do, and we have a specific idea of how we want to get it done. We were able to have that communication and everyone was able to at least say what they wanted to say and get their ideas heard. The issue of teamwork, you kind of put people together and expect them all to be professional. I had an amazing group. I think I was very lucky 
We were all very different people, though. There's definitely a different communication style with each person in my group, and I think that's true of every crew. Joe Grimmy, who originally came up with the idea and had a lot on his plate this term, so he kind of co-produced it and then did sound. And he was very practical in his approach. At the regatta shoot, Joe wanted to get a shot underneath the dock. And so we took grip tape, which comes off very easily. It's not gummy. And we wound the tape around Joe's hand and around the camera several times until the point where he could not drop the camera if he tried. Just to make sure that my hand can't work. Well, here, here, let your hand out, and I will see you. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. You can't we're let good. your hand off? Mm -mm. Good. We're good. <clears throat> and then we had him shoot under the dock. And definitely in a pinch when you're running, running, gunning, when you're moving the camera quickly, something you have to Actually, think about. I'm going to need you to stop that right now. So we can we had Mindy Hirsch, who is my director, who is definitely a very strong personality. She could also produce if she wanted. She kind of takes over when things are, are kind of having a lull, and she definitely helps organize everything. She's, according to the first two members of your team, and I want honest answers on this, your team is just getting along fine and dandy. We're getting along fine. Like I told you the other day, I, I sort of put my faith into Andrea's process. She was someone I needed to be very direct and very succinct with. She didn't like long messages on the answering machine. She didn't like long emails. She just wanted to know what was going on and when, and then she would go from there and make it happen. And Andrea is very intense, but I like her. Yeah. <laughs> like Joe Grimmie and I are like, Andrea, stand back. You're, you're not allowed in this circle. <laughs> like, stand back. At least she recognizes she is intense. <laughs> yeah, like, we're, we joke around with her about it. And like I said, like, I have faith in her process that, like, she is all over, but in the end, she can pull it out. If I was, if I didn't have faith in her process, I'd be like real worried, but I'm, I'm not yeah, so worried. In any group, you're gonna have different personalities and there's gonna be a potential for conflict. But as long as you have communication, you'll be okay because everyone will understand that their ideas are being listened to. Joe Maloney, who's really laid back and who just kind of goes with the flow, he's our camera person and he has a vision and is able to implement other people's vision as well. Joe doesn't have as much camera experience as the, as the other three of us do, but I think that works to an advantage, mm -hmm. where the three of us are like, well, why don't we try this? And Joe's like, well, I'm just gonna do this. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> because the three of us have done so much other project work, we keep thinking of it in that manner. I really saw him grow throughout the term. He became an excellent camera person by the end of the shoot. I mean, his shots by the end were amazing. And so he was someone that could really learn from what you told him. We tried to balance it so each team um, had both an advanced, a very advanced student and another graduate student and an undergraduate. I think it worked out very well, considering. The undergraduates amazed me. They worked very, very hard. And even though they weren't pulling their full weight for a while, as it got to the end, they really were. They were determined to keep up, and they did. Sandy Cannon-Brown is a great leader, in my opinion. In our class, she functioned as a professor, but more importantly, she functioned as sort of an executive producer and as our boss. She had the final say on things, and she really led us in the correct direction. And instead of just sort of telling us what to do, she really sat down with us and explained and showed us and acted as a executive producer or a boss would. I mean, she didn't interfere with our projects, but she guided us. And she definitely knew that her role was to make it happen, but not to actually physically do all the pieces. Most of these students, I realize now, have done everything on their own. They may have worked in team, but the, uh, the teams that they've worked on, the pressure hasn't been to be on a PBS station. It's been to get a grade. There's a lot of difference. One thing that, I, that we discuss is the possibility of pairing it off. If I had my way, I would make like an artistic piece. But like I know that it can't be straight artistic piece. The rough cut stage, how would you see the best way that you would like to work on that with your team? I want to do my own cut first of all, you I think. But then I definitely want to see what everyone else has to say and definitely work as a group because I enjoy editing and I think I'm pretty decent at it too.
Okay. But I think more of something like with the words and like using it more lyrically. Clearly, I mean, I told Andrea that's what we should do with the footage when we're all done with this is put together something nice. There are a lot of strong personalities in communications. A lot of people who are very creative um, have their own ideas and want to work their own way. The general feeling of what we wanted to do never changed and it feels the way we wanted it to feel. You know, you have this big goal and then you start production and it feels like it's all going to fall apart and you're never going to get it done. But if it can come together in the editing room and if you can get that feeling that you sort of dreamed of in the end, then then it all worked out and it doesn't matter what problems you had. No one else is going to know about them. They're just going to see the end product. So I really liked how it turned out. I think that it flows and it has a form that we had wanted it to have. And I guess it doesn't matter how we came to that point, it worked in the end. And then color correct that just uh, the shot of the face with a soft edge on it. So I think Jason mentioned, but this is similar to what you would do in Photoshop with the... Yeah. Right, right, yeah, with just copying a little color into it. Um, problem is you've got so much that is already in the mid-range, um, in the, you know, the grass and the foliage in the background. Back. I mean, every part of my body feels like it's been strengthened. So it's really enjoyable and it feels great because basically you get the calm of the water. It's hard. It's hard. Work this way. Yeah. Um, okay, class, attention. Let's watch the river. I often think of it as a, a dance with the water, that you're actually dancing with the river itself. I continue rowing because it's the love of my life. It's the reason I go to college, basically. From the pitch, I think the idea that went through it is the fact that we were able to tell a story that has an environmental message but not hit the audience over the head with the environmental message. It's there, and it's put in in such a way that it's intricate to the tale that the people are telling. It's not simply thrown in because we think it needs to be. It's there because they know it needs to be. And that's the best thing, is the film came together in such a way that I'm thrilled with it. When I originally pitched it, I had no idea, honestly, what the final product would be. I had an idea of what I thought would be a good film, but this is better than what my original idea was.